good morning welcome back to the online classes dear students in previous class we have seen about uh, the formation of indo gangetic plains and in today's lesson we are going to see about the, the most important relief feature peninsular plateau peninsular plateau the indian plateau is also called as peninsular plateau because it is in the shape of a peninsula which is covered with the water on three sides and the land on one side that is the reason why we called the indian plateau as a, a peninsular plateau if you observe the peninsular plateau is made up of old crystalline rocks it is made up of hard igneous rocks and it is also made up of metamorphic rocks the peninsular plateau is composed of it is made up of old crystalline rocks hard igneous rocks and metamorphic rocks this peninsular plateau is made up of old crystalline hard igneous and metamorphic rocks and if you just go deep into this peninsular plateau this peninsular plateau is very rich in metallic resources and non metallic resources natural resources like iron ore like gold mines metallic resources you can find in this peninsular plateau and in the same way non metallic resources like uh, coal like uh, limestone you can also find in this peninsular plateau dear students like indo gangetic plain this peninsular plateau do not have perennial rivers we have seen indo gangetic plain has many perennial rivers but peninsular plateau do not have perennial rivers and for the second crop in these peninsular plateau they have to depend upon two wells the for the sake of the second crop the first crop will be in the rainy season because of the rains and when there are no rains the second crop in the peninsular plateau depends upon the tube wells and the bore wells the only irrigation process is the tube wells and the bore wells and if you observe the indian the indo gangetic plain is wet in nature and coming to this peninsular plateau it is dry land so dear students if you observe this peninsular plateau it is a triangular shape which tilt towards the east it's a very important point the slope of the peninsular plateau tilt towards the east on the west side it will be at a higher elevation and coming towards the east it has a slope so this peninsular plateau slightly tilts towards the east and if you observe this peninsular plateau is bounded is divided into two major plateaus one you come across about the malwa plateau or the central highlands this is also called as a central highlands this central highlands is also called as malwa plateau and the other plateau we come across is deccan plateau so this peninsular plateau is divided into broadly two plateaus one is called as malwa plateau and the other one is called as deccan plateau this peninsular plateau is bounded with the eastern ghats on the east western ghats on the west and you come across uh, aravalli mountains on the northwest part and it is bounded with the kanyakumari which is the southern most tip of this uh, peninsular plateau so as we have seen the peninsular plateau is divided into two broad 
a plateau one is malva plateau is also called as the central highlands and the other one is uh, the deccan plateau so we will clearly learn about these two different plateaus now just look at the map here the malva plateau and the deccan plateau the boundaries of the malva plateau is very very important this malva plateau is where it is located to the south of the Indo-Gangetic Plains. To the south of the Indo-Gangetic Plains, we come across the Malwa Plateau, and the southern boundary of the Malwa Plateau is Narmada River. Very very important point. The southern boundary of Malwa Plateau is Narmada River. Narmada River is the southern boundary of Malwa Plateau. And this Central Highlands Malwa Plateau is also divided broadly into Malwa Plateau and the Chota Nagpur Plateau. And this Chota Nagpur Plateau is very rich in mineral resources as I have said prior So if you observe this Malwa Plateau which is also called as the Central Highlands. And the Chota Nagpur Plateau which is very rich in mineral resources. So, Narmada river divides the Malwa plateau and the Deccan plateau. So, this Malwa plateau is bounded with the Indo Gangetic plain on the north uh, west part, and coming to here, it is bounded with different other ranges uh, uh, like uh, uh, Kaimur range, Maikala range. You can find uh, different types of mountains on the western part. So now coming to this uh, Deccan Plateau, this Deccan Plateau, if you observe the northern edge of the Deccan Plateau, the northern edge of the Deccan Plateau is uh, Satpura Mountains. Satpura Mountains. The northern edge of this Deccan Plateau is uh, Satpura Mountains. So, if you observe this Deccan Plateau, it has a slope towards the east. The Deccan Plateau, as I have said, the Peninsular Plateau slightly tilts towards the east. The Deccan Plateau, it slightly tilts towards the east. This Deccan Plateau is bounded with the Eastern Gods on the east, Western Gods on the west, and Kanyakumari at the southernmost tip, and Satpura Mountains on the north. So these are the boundaries of the Deccan Plateau. So, if you observe the Eastern Guards and the Western Guards. So, coming to these Western Guards. So, these Western Guards are continuous chain of mountains which starts from Gujarat to Nilagiris. So, these Western Guards are continuous chain of mountains and the average height of these Western Guards at the Nilagiris where Godaluru is the place, where Godalur is the place, where Nelagiri Hills and the Western Guards join together. The average height of these Nelagiri mountains is 2000 meters height. 2000 meters height is the average height of the Nelagiri Hills. And if you observe, in Nelagiri we find Vodaka Mandalam, which is also called as Uti Vodaka Mandalam. Vodaka Mandalam. So, the other name of this Vodaka Mandalam is Uti, where you know which is a famous hill resort in the summer seasons, and that Uti is located in this Nelagiri Hills. And the average in this Nelagiri is the highest peak is Dora Betta. It's a very very important peak. The highest peak in Nelagiri is Dora Betta, and the height of this Dora Betta is 2,637 meters height. So, if you observe, the Western Ghats are continuous mountains. And in these western guards, uh, you come across, they extend uh, uh, to, uh, to the height of uh, uh, 2000 meters uh, height and they are continuous mountains to 1600 kilometers. 
from Gujarat to Kanyakumari, 1600 kilometers they extend. And now coming to the Eastern Ghats. So comparison between Eastern Ghats and Western Ghats is a very important answer. Western Ghats are continuous chain of mountains, but Eastern Ghats are not continuous chain of mountains. And these Eastern Ghats starts from Mahanadi Valley. Mahanadi Valley which is in Orissa, you come across Mahanadi River and from that to this Kanyakumari, these Eastern Ghats extend and these Eastern Ghats are not continuous chain of mountains as we have seen in the Western Ghats. And if you see, in these Eastern Ghats, it's very important, in Vishakapatanam, we come across Aloya Konda. Aloya Konda is a peak which is in Vishakapatanam at Chintapalli. At Chintapalli. So, this Aloya Konda at Chintapalli is the highest peak in Eastern Ghats. So, we are making a difference between Western Ghats and Eastern Ghats. And if you see, in the Western Ghats, we come across different uh, mountains uh, like uh, we come across Annamalai Hills, we come across Palani Hills, we come across Kandamon Hills, Kandamon Hills in Kerala is very important, Palani Hills in Tamil Nadu is very important. So, in the same way, the Eastern Ghats, we have different hills, uh, Nallamala Hills. Papi Kondalu Hills, Veli Kondalu Hills, and Shesha Chalam Hills, what we come across, the seven hills of Lord Venkateshwara, all these comes under Eastern Ghats. And the people who are living in Vishakapatnam, you can find the Kailasagiri, you can find the Dolphin Nose, you can find Simha Chalam Hills, all these hills are also a part of Eastern Ghats. So, if you observe, in these western guards we have seen about uh, Nilagiri Hills, Dorabetta, the highest peak, in the same way, in Annamalai Hills, very important, in Annamalai Hills, Annamalai Hills, we come across uh, Annai Mudi, very very important, uh, Annai Mudi, this is the highest peak uh, with 2697 meters height and this is uh, in Kerala we come across uh, and this is the highest peak uh, in Annamalai Hills, uh, Annai Mudi, the highest peak uh, in South India, very important half mark answer. Point number one, the highest peak in Nelagiris is Dodabetta, 2637 meters. The highest peak in Eastern Ghats is Aroya Konda in Chintapalli in Vishakapatna. In this total South India, in this total South India, the highest peak is Annai Mudi, Annamalai Hills. So dear students, the most important answers what you come across in this particular peninsular plateau is about the distinction between Malwa Plateau and the Deccan Plateau. The boundaries of Malwa Plateau and the Deccan Plateau, the differences between Eastern Guards and Western Guards and most important half mark answers and the one mark answers is about the peaks, about the Dorabetta, about the Annai Mudi, about the Aravya Panda. So, this peninsula plateau, the Deccan plateau especially, it is formed because of the volcanic eruptions and you can find black soil mostly because of the volcanic eruptions in the Deccan plateau. Uh, some million years of back, it is composed of black soil because of the volcanic eruptions. So, go through the textbook very clearly. Draw a Indian map on your own and locate the plateaus, locate uh, the guards uh, and locate the highest points and the highest peaks on the map. Uh, it's a very important chapter, the examination point of view, which carries a four mark answer literally. So thank you very much. Go through the chapter. Have a great day. Thank you.